Bonjour and <clears throat> welcome to the Tavrien podcast. Hello, all. Bonjour, Rob. Hey, Rob. You Hello. Sound, I can actually hear your voice clearly. Yes, I'm. I'm sitting here talking to this big blue yeti, and it, it's awesome. A big blue yeti. Uh, where did you find him? Was he in the woods? It was in the. You 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 had it last episode. He was in the Best Buy, just sitting there. <laughs> just in the Best Buy. See, I knew I knew it was from somewhere. It wasn't from Walmart. So I can increase the overall <laughs> sound quality of our podcast by episode twelve. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> How you doing, Bill? Not too bad. I'm on like my six mic when it comes to podcasting. I've only been doing this for a year. <laughs> Just like kept trying different ones, kept trying different ones, and then eventually my work gave me one. Thank you, work. <laughs> um, not, not, for, not for podcasting, of course, but <laughs> they, yes. gave, they gave me one nevertheless. And uh, yeah, I really like this one. It suits awesome. my, my portable podcasting need. <laughs> so it don't sound like I'm recording from the bathroom from an iPhone. Yes, but, but the good thing is, is that you are still in the bathroom. <laughs> um, let's keep something to the imagination, please. <laughs> That's right. Rich records in his pants, you record in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> these these are known these are known facts in the world. Yes. America. America. We record where we want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, hello hello Americans, Europeans, Japanese, Swedish people alike. <laughs> and welcome to a Wheel of Time podcast, one of uh, many out there. Uh I I tell you what I find really strange, Rob. I've now found because I've now found four or five other podcasts which all seem to be Wheel of Time related that all yep. started about within a week or two of us. <laughs> yes. Some of them started before us, some of them started after us, but for some reason we all had that same that same drive. I can feel the pattern pulling us all together. Well, I don't know if we ever mentioned this on the podcast, but we actually had planned to start this back in <laughs> December of 2018. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I've got I've got things going back well before then as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it just never happened. So randomly one April morning you were like, Hey, let's do this now. Go live talk. <laughs> yeah, I've just read a blog from Brandon Sanderson saying that the TV program had been approved. Let's do this now. <laughs> I want to get some of these books read before the before the bloody TV series comes out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So what's the what's the plan for today, Rob? Well, I think we got another double up. Uh, this is my first double up. So you guys, you guys knocked it out real good uh, last week. Impressed yeah, I was, with that. I was quite pleased. Yeah, yeah, it went went well. So <laughs> picking up the pace a little bit, but not too much. Don't want to miss some of the, you know, some of the things we got we can get uh, at one chapter of pace. Ah, so yeah, this is this is kind of uh, my thing here. Like this, technically, we shouldn't have doubled up today because it was um, quite. Um, there was quite a bulk, you know, this, this was slightly longer than what I would consider to be our cutoff. But at the same time, kind of like the first chapter, a lot happens, but the next chapter, not so much yeah. happens. Well, per, per your normal MO, set up rules and immediately break them the first opportunity you get. Yeah. <laughs> rules were meant to be broken. If I can't make my own rules and then break them straight away, then screw you, universe. <laughs> you can go suck a nut. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all of you. All of you, universe. <laughs> hey, guess guess what? We got reviews. We have. I know. We got we got well we have four total reviews. Uh wow, three cool. from, well three from the US and then I think one from the UK. Cool. Did you get my one star review? That was you, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Self deprecation. I'll, I'll comment on that in a bit. <laughs> Yes, well, do you want me to start with the UK review? Yeah, go ahead. Um, from uh, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan Zero. He's one of our Discord guys, too. Yeah, he's one of our Discord guys. Uh, he said, this podcast has re-energized my desire for another read-through of this beautiful series. Uh, loving nerdy banter and questionable... Sorry, Rob. <laughs> voice acting oh, and readings no. of voice. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, Jamaican land is a big thing. Jamaican, Jamaican, Jamaican Yeti will be gold. Yes, Jamaican land has become a big thing in my life, Rob. 
<laughs> I want him to uh, continue. I love Jamaican Lamb. I love I all the I, things you've come up with him too. I literally just can't think of anything other, anything better in my life at the moment than Jamaican Lamb. I, I laughed so hard. Um, if it, was it um, not not chapter nine, chapter eight? Uh, Guys, chapter, yeah. If you haven't listened to chaps, our chapter eight episode with um, readings with Rob, go back check out chapter eight's reading with Rob. Oh my god! I think, I think it was on, Jonathan on Discord who actually commented saying, you know, I want to paraphrase here, but you know. The accent is Malkiri, and no one can tell you otherwise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's your interpretation of a northern, <laughs> the Malkiri Northern Borderlands <laughs> accent. Yep, I love that. It's a cross between Scottish, Irish, and Jamaican, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, listen to readings of Rob if you're using like your uh, iPod catcher. Oh, I, I hate that sentence. <laughs> I feel <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm being peer pressured into saying it rather than saying your podcasting app. But yeah, your pod catcher. catcher. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say it, catcher. Ugh, it just make it fills my tongue with like vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> vegetables, <laughs> like yeah, you know, I mean, your tongue feels furry. <laughs> Whatever so. that is. Uh, but yes, um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, on your podcast app, listen to it at one point two five speed. That's what I normally listen at, and it really emphasizes the Jamaican bit of of Jamaican man. <laughs> was it yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to Jamaican man uh, but yeah I haven't finished this review yet but, uh, looking forward to the podcast growing even more in future chapters and books uh, very good Jonathan thank you Jonathan 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 the next the next review I got is from Second Breakfast he might be a fan of The Hobbit but anyway that is the best breakfast I, in fact I commend this podcast taking on the wheel of time is a big job but I'm glad someone's doing it I read three and a half books a few years ago and just restarted them. Nice to hear what others have to say about the chapter so I get a little more context with all the names and such. You should add every time Rand interrupts Loyal to the list of things that you count. That drives me nuts. <laughs> what? He's absolutely right. I, maybe overall who interrupts him, but yeah, Rand does seem to interrupt Loyal a lot. <laughs> he does. <laughs> <laughs> but then the thing is with Loyal is that he'll just go on and on. But anyway, that's spoilers. But no one knows who Loyal is yet. He's, I know. Oh my goodness. Uh, and our <laughs> next, <laughs> our next <laughs> review comes from B. T. McClure, and it's called "A Fun Way to Revisit the Book Series." By the way, both I think Jonathan was a five star. Second yep. Breakfast was a five star, and B. T. McClure's is a five star as well. And even if you've never heard of it, this is a great way to get into it. Love it. Short and sweet. I love that review. Thank you, McClure. <laughs> and we have a fourth review that Bill teased. Uh, we, we did receive a one-star review anonymously, which, oh. you know, everybody has their right to their opinion. Um, yeah. I'm not angry about the one-star, but what I am angry with is that it did not come with any constructive <laughs> criticisms or any thoughts of reasons why the one-star <clears throat> was wanted. He must really hate us. Uh, he, he or she, not to be sexist. No, no. <laughs> I blame Rich. Yep. Uh, this is this is to be known on the podcast that uh, if we get any one star reviews, especially without comments, that it is definitely going to be Rich's fault. So yes, so odds Rich, are Rich did sake, something wrong to make this make this person upset. We're sorry. Uh, <laughs> we will reprimand Rich in our own way. Um, but thank you, Mister Troll, for the one star review with no reasoning whatsoever, constructive criticism or not. <laughs> Uh, what's what's next up? Anyway, anyway. <laughs> let's let's get on to more positive things and you know. <laughs> um, we got three we got three five star reviews, man. I'm pumped. Oh yeah, it's oh, we're doing great. I, I love it. I just, we, it just yeah. My my other podcast never people never review them. So just the fact that people I, oh, people I know, I know, but that was a long time ago. We did a whole competition <laughs> where we gave away twenty five quid, and it was only people I know reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give it to another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I only know podcasters. <laughs> but, oh my God. but at least at least the guy we gave it to had no association like officially with the networks and stuff. But, Correct. So Correct. so Daniel K deserved that. By the he way, did, I'm yeah. gonna recommend Daniel K's Let's K podcast. It's the funniest fucking podcast on that. <laughs> In my opinion. Uh, uh, but I absolutely love it. So yeah, if you haven't listened to Daniel K's Let's Play, um yeah, give it a try. It's very strange, uh, but Daniel is just amazing. I think he's so so funny. So if you if you're a fan of uh, Australians, Australian humor, Australians and Australian humor, then get in there. But yeah, I love it. 
<laughs> anyway, I, I, I seem to recommend Daniel K's Let's Play on every single podcast on every single episode. So let's carry on. That's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to jump ahead right to the news. Um, Wheel of Time news. <laughs> Sorry, I'm turns. <laughs> oh, that should be a drop. You should have that. <laughs> Welcome to the Wheel News with your host, Rob. <laughs> <sighs> so, not real news, but what I call rumor based on fact. So, Tom <laughs> Felton, more commonly known as Draco Malfoy from the Harry Potter Wizarding World, was seen recently practicing his sword work in the Czech Republic which is also, we know, a location that uh, Rafe is using for the Wheel of Time show. So a lot of speculation on that. Um, my thought is, could we be seeing Dane Bornhold in the flesh, uh, our first white cloak, uh, Mr. Draco Malfoy? What are your thoughts? Um, which one's Dane Bornhold? <laughs> he's, well, he's in the one upcoming chapter. He's like... Well, so he's, he's, the one they, he's the one they bump into in Bailon, right? Yes, yes. Okay, that's fine. Um, that is fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm happy with that. I, I was trying to remember who's who because there's. I know. Um, I know there's another child of light who's. I really love. <laughs> coming up in the books, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't him. I think his name might be Gwen. Uh, I think, or I think or Gwen. yeah, my call was Dane Bornhold because as, I think chapter season one will rely heavily on the Eye of the World, and he, mm. he makes appearances there and. Yeah, if I remember rightly, he's a bit of a dick, isn't he, Borno? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, Draco Malfoy is also kind of a dick. He's also well. a bit of a dick. Killed his headmaster. <laughs> uh, Legend. Who doesn't want to kill the headmaster? Anyway, <laughs> Harry Potter spoilers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to Harry Potter spoiler cars. Oh, my God. The wands were the same. <laughs> they had the same core in the wand. <laughs> That's why it all happened. They skipped he over the wand lore in the bloody movies. Yeah, Bastards. I know. It was my best, it was my favorite bit of the book was the one law. <laughs> well, that and uh, Voldemort's uh, history too is that part in the books too. Like. Yeah, they kind of yeah they kind of they 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 got some of it in there, but yeah, just like nothing was mentioned about one law, and that's why they had those weird one battles between each other. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, we'll um, see that conversation with all the different wand wavings and and stuff that we'll see in the Wheel of Time too, because they're all about <laughs> wand lore. Weaving. Yes, I see a lovely cat meme of a cat trying to weave Saddam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, enough about oh, cat memes. Yeah. Uh, what so, was we doing? Oh yeah, Wheel News. Oh yeah, Draco Malfoy. <laughs> and, and, and as always, Narg on spot with, with all of his news um, and even some of his fantasy cast and, and, and then rumor mills. Love you, Narg. Keep up the great work. Oh, I'm so excited to hear they cast as Matt. What? <laughs> I'm so excited to see who they cast as Matt. Oh, I know. We just wait. We gotta wait for the rumor of someone practicing their bow and uh, quarter staff. Yes, <laughs> techniques. As soon as you hear, oh, this this actor was seen uh, playing with a quarter staff. It's like it's gonna be Matt. <laughs> this, guy was, this guy was seen in Prague walking around with a dagger. <laughs> with a big ruby. Uh, no, no, let's not talk about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, more spoilers. Right, next section. <laughs> oh God, Rob. For some reason, when, when it's you, mate, I go so off topic. <laughs> It's all right. <laughs> you bring point. out the worst in me. Uh, it's, yeah, it's me. Not uh, rich. It's Rich. Rich, if you were here, <laughs> I'd be on track. So, chapter <laughs> discussions. Like I said, we're going to double it up today. We, we are. Uh, going to now, start with... Go well, no, hang on one second, because I don't have... Um, uh, it, now, this is my fault, <laughs> because I forgot to ask uh, <laughs> within a reasonable time frame, because uh, I was going to be doing the um, <laughs> the faults of the Gamote. <laughs> or the GMO. Oh yeah. Uh, I was going to be doing the faults of the GMO from the previous chapters as like a refresher of what happened like last week. Last mm -hmm. week on the Tarvian podcast. <laughs> faults of the GMO. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I forgot. I only asked him like about four hours ago. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I was like, oh, hang on. I forgot to ask you if you had your uh, chapters 10 and 11. I said, yeah, I can put, probably put them out at some point. So, so look forward to that next week. <laughs> Yes, a, a big, we'll, large GMO. Yeah, we, we're going to have a triple GMO next week. <laughs> triple GMO. <laughs> triple GMO. Uh, so awesome. I'm going to be looking forward to that. Um, but yes, uh, what chapters are we covering today, Rob? We are going to cover chapter 12, Across the Terran, and chapter 13, Choices. Excellent. Now, do, do you want my confession? Lay it, bear your soul. Bear my soul. So, I... <laughs> I did 
Um, so obviously, I've, I have I finished the um, the Eye of the World about a week or two ago, uh, and I've been going back and rereading the chapters uh, as and, as and when I get time uh, and making notes on them. Uh, so I I opened up my my notebook this morning, sat on the train thinking, right, I've got a perfect amount of time to go through these two chapters. Started up my started up the uh, the old um, Audible app, pushed play, started listening. I heard. The mentions of um, Rand complaining about the fact that they were sitting on the horses and his bum, he was butt sore. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they go over to the terry, the ferryman and then I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially um, your notes say Rand is butt hurt. Yeah, so essentially these two chapters, Rand's butt hurt, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I did, I did manage to catch up on it a little bit as well, but especially the second chapter choices, but uh, I didn't really make any decent notes. I just, I fell asleep. My uh, my little girl has not been sleeping very well the last couple oh. of days, which then in turn means I'm not yeah, sleeping very well. So apologies, yeah. uh, I may I may not have much to, in- to interject this week. <laughs> I'll try to do what I can. If you can hear, here's my notebook. I'm still trying to catch up. I'm, I mean, I haven't read through the whole like this reread. I'm up to chapter 21 because I'm trying to do it methodically instead of your your route of plow through and then <laughs> go through again. The problem is, I just but, get to well, when I start listening to something. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my god, I've got no weapons next. And then it's just like, I just couldn't stop listening to it. I had to get all the way to the end. Uh, There's so much to talk about at the end. But anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so Rand's butt hurt. <laughs> Rand is butt hurt. And that's that poll. <laughs> my first note here says fatigue was beginning to set into the party, except for Egwene, because, you know, she's still enjoying her quote unquote adventure. Yes. So Rand even comments, why is she so. Why, we just got traced by this flying evil Drakkar. <laughs> By the way, which I in my head I always nicknamed Dracon Noir, which is cheap cologne, cheap American cologne. Yeah, so, I kind Dracar of thought part. I kind of thought yeah. after last week's episode I should have called him like a a Drac drone or something. Dracon Noir. <laughs> but anyway, after being chased by the Dracon Noir, everybody's freaked out. <laughs> Egwene, who's still kind of, you know, yeah, adventure time. Woo! Oh, so pumped. <laughs> oh, it's just so awesome. <laughs> so Rand's like, what is her problem? Did she even understand what the hell is going on here? No. <laughs> anyway, she's so, she's riding horses through the woods. She's having a fun time. <laughs> after our favorite uh, Jamaican land <clears throat> pays off, uh, uh, Master Hightower. By the way, love the callback <laughs> to Police Academy. Uh, also I, I hope he plays Hightower high in, 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 in the in, in the show so much. And cast Sergeant Tackleberry as Land. Yes. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so as the as the ferry you know crew is getting ready, well, Steve Gutenberg and, could be in the Gleeman. Ah, yeah. <laughs> he's still working. <laughs> I don't know. If he's got a big white uh, star, she's done. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you mentioned last week, you know, Taryn Fairy Folk, you want to shake the hand, count your fingers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the boys are trying to play the boys see Lan being intimidating without being intimidating. And he has this whole mood about him that just says, Don't fuck with me. So the boys are trying to Don't copy. fuck with me, Mom. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so the boys are trying to copy it to the best of their abilities, and I guess all trying to, you know, ran, ran like Paul's disorder. Matt's, you know, stringing his bows, and Perrin's adjusting his the axe with his belt. But the best, the best. Oh my god, I love this line. Tom whipping out his dagger out of nowhere. He starts clipping his fingernails. <laughs> well, he does it with. I like the fact that he does it with such a flurry as well. He, oh my god, yes. It's just like from nowhere, the dagger appears in his hand. It's spinning round, and it slaps in his heel. And then he starts picking his fingernails with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't and, um, it was it Moraine shoots him an approving look and uh, Egwene starts to clap. <laughs> that kind of kills the intimidation. Yeah, he's like, uh, 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 oh, yeah, sorry, I should, I'm supposed to be intimidating this uh, fairy man. <laughs> oh my gosh. In the, uh, my next note here says Rand and Lan uh, discuss the shadiness of, of Sergeant Hightower. <laughs> the master. Uh, Moraine offers oh, that's right, um, to keep everybody honest, Mulrane publicly announces that all of the, the all of the dock workers will get a silver on top of their normal wage. Mm-hmm. So that way, it, you know, keeps everybody honest. So now the, the ferry master has to keep an eye on his own staff because they've been promised silver. So I thought that was kind of once again another gangster move by Mulrane. He's just killing it. He's gangster, yo. So gangster. <laughs> so. <laughs> And the best is they, you know, they, they make the payment, they get set up, they go across, 
everybody offloads. <laughs> you know, remember what happens next? <laughs> oh, well, you know, it's a river, so naturally, there's naturally occurring whirlpools in the river. <laughs> the toilet flushes. Whoosh. Yeah. You know, this just, this just happens in rivers. Huge whirlpools come along and just pull your ferry into the floor. Very natural. <laughs> now, just, just to point out about the ferry, um, just for maybe say, I can't imagine there are, but people who haven't read the books, <laughs> should we describe the ferry? That It's basically just a big square bit of wood. <laughs> yes, that's okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think a com- he could be barely commented, he commented that he could barely hold the current party and their horses because, of course, they weren't expecting, mm. you know, Tal or Egwin. Yeah. So it's the, I mean, this is how backwater part of the like universe that this place is supposed to be. That the ferry to cross into the two rivers, which is basically the only way into the two rivers, is basically a huge square bit of wood, which is a raft <laughs> attached to a bit of rope. And the ferryman pull the rope yep. <laughs> while standing on the on the raft to get themselves across. I think they've got some poles as well to sort of try and keep themselves on track. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that's all the ferry is. It's not like a, a nice little steamboat with a big wheel or something. <laughs> it's not even nice. It's not even a little yacht. It's like it's just a big slab of wood chucked in the water. <laughs> I, I just I just love the fact that once they got there, I'm just like, wow, they the, the two rivers really is the back ass end of nowhere. <laughs> it is, it? Yeah, that, 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 a whole new world. Yep, that's where that's where these boys have been hiding. <laughs> so yeah, go on, carry on, carry on. <laughs> big world, big world pool turns up out of nowhere. High towers watching just his entire live, living and livelihood literally go down the tubes, and as he's looking dumbfounded, you know, hey man, how about some more gold for you for the for the ferry? He starts putting gold coins in his hand until, until he's like, all right, whatever. So he's just all right. like, oh, I got it. You know, he's, he's seeing his, everything go down the drain. And pirate just, hotel. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps getting handed gold pieces until he's like, okay, now I'm not so mad. <laughs> uh, yes. So, um, as the party suspects, <laughs> Moraine was the one who summoned the whirlpool. <laughs> oh, shocker. Shocker. <laughs> oh god and yeah it just creeps the boys out a little bit <laughs> well, that, um, there's a com- i have a comment here says, my rain shows bravado regarding the casting of the fog across the northern two rivers uh, oh, that's yeah funny. because because the fog's still there and okay. um uh because they were like they were discussing the fact that well isn't it just going to be obvious that this is where we've come to cross and she says well the drakkar aren't really that clever and yep. she has spread the fog up and down the length of the river on the other side. So it's going to think that they're still hiding in the fog. And then mm-hmm. I think she says she sends it westward is, or, no, or eastwards. So the fog starts to then move east down the river. So then the Drakkar will think it's moving that way. And she oh, says, yeah. I think she mentions that it'll be a while before the murderer works out that the Drakkar's been tricked. Yeah. Because think- she couldn't trick a murderer, murderer, but she can trick the Drakkar. Yeah. I think it was funny though. She gives this big explanation, then she ends it by saying, "I don't need to give you explanations." <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm doing, but you don't need I, to know. I'm wagering to tell you all this. <laughs> I'm going to for a bit of disposition <laughs> because otherwise, this won't make sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one of those yeah. things that you'll get from a right because <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know I know Brandon Sanderson likes to use um, he likes to use writing groups. So he's got like these five or six people who. We're also authors and they do writing groups together and they they literally read each other's work as they're creating it so then they point yeah then they point out you know well this doesn't really make any sense so i think this was one of those probably moments where um <clears throat> harry the Dougal used to do that for robert jordan and this is probably one of the things she was like well that doesn't make sense why did they cross the river <laughs> what's what's yeah. going on with the fog and he was like well i'll have maureen explain it and then i'll tell her i don't need to explain myself to you <laughs> it's almost like they just cut and paste that bit in and then didn't take out that I don't need to explain myself <laughs> well I think it's better the way it is this yeah, is my I love it. you know going forward I don't have to explain shit <laughs> yeah but next next time I do something crazy which will be uh, not too far away <laughs> I <don't. That's> <laughs> the, ne- the next miracle that I perform will never be talked about in the books ever again <laughs> and no one else will ever talk about it and no one else will ever do it <laughs> but I'll get to that when we get to that chapter here's your Harry Potter connection <laughs> a, a famous meme with a in the third movie where they have the time machine yep and there's a meme that's that that, that shows um hermione and harry 
you know, they're, they're going back in time. And Harry's like, this is a time, this is a time machine. This is great. And then Hermione says, yes, but don't tell anybody about it ever again. And going forward, just gonna let all of our friends and close ones die and not do anything about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh God. But yeah, it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. I think it's the chapter after next, but um, yeah, there's, there's something Moraine does and it's literally never happens again in the next 14 books. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> What? <laughs> Surely, if they if, if they all know how to do this, well, all right, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> I digress. And I think that's basically a chapter done, isn't it? Well, I, I got a couple more notes here. Scroll real quick. Oh, I, um, I was asleep. I don't know. I know. You know <laughs> but Lance stops the party out at a camp that he had set up sometime way before under a copse of trees. So Lane had anticipated that they were going to be to this very spot at night time. So <laughs> Lane balls out and was ready ready for him because he's bowling so, y'all yeah he had a whole I'm a baller, whole man. <laughs> um Edwin we will definitely to... coming back here man <laughs> i track it man you know <laughs> <laughs> so Egwin has her first les- lesson in tapping into the one power <clears throat> oh yes uh, is, this, guess, is this with the yeah. blue ball yes her and egg her and Maureen guy gonna go off to the corner um we get our first mention of sedane and sadar you know uh-huh great line here rand rand kind of attempts to interfere but tom cuts tom cuts him off yes it's beyond, it's beyond you boy <laughs> so i love yeah. that line yes it's beyond you, you boy. <laughs> you can't <laughs> stop this train yeah we can't get off this train now can't get off this train boy hashtag Aaron um, wallace um <laughs> yes also get our first mention of ajas of what Marine, kind of giving her a high level explanation she mentions that there are factions of Aes Sedai broken in, in into Ajas. Oh the Ajars, yeah. Um the yeah, Ajars. <laughs> Ajar. <laughs> Ajar. Yeah. In in Tarvalon we have Ajar. <laughs> we've we've got five Ajars. <laughs> you had one Ajar. <laughs> you just had one Ajar to do and that was it. <laughs> You're only meant to blow the bloody Ajars off. Anyway. Um <laughs> oh terrible movie quotes. Um I know. My final my final note for the chapter though is Egwene finds out that she can channel because the ball was pulsating, 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 and quieted down and then flickered at the very end. Mm-hmm. And Egwene was like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I, don't, I guess I just wasted your time. And Barbara was like, Nope. Yep, that, that last, last one was you. Me. Yep. <laughs> and I think she says, isn't it? Like I think she also says it normally takes like a few months of training in the White Tower for girls to be able to pull that off. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the best <laughs> the final line of the of the chapter and you can almost feel Rand's heart sink because Egwene turned to Rand. Rand, I'm gonna be an ass to die. <laughs> yeah. You don't get Aaron's reaction, but you can just tell he's like, oh <laughs> Rand, I'm gonna be an ass to die. <laughs> and it's just like in Rand's head, it's just like, ah oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. 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 Um yes. So uh yeah, like you say, the important thing uh really. So, you know, the exciting stuff was them crossing the ferry and the ferry sinking into the water. Yeah. But uh, the important takeaway as well was the um, <clears throat> was the mentions of uh, so, now how are we going to pronounce it? Sidar and I, I would have said Sidan and Sidar. Sidan and Sidar, which are the two halves of the one power. So Moraine goes into quite a bit of disposition about you know um, there's only one power. But actually, there's two parts of the one power. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's seven parts of the female side that we use it. <laughs> um, I think we yes. also get a little, I forget if it was this one or maybe another lesson that, that Ma Rain says that women are stronger with water and. Uh, Sadai, 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 Sadai. Sadai, Sadai. Chapter 13. <laughs> yes, so moving on. Uh, yeah, sorry. Because uh, I was talking, sorry about that. Uh, just had, sorry, listeners, sorry, I just had a bit of an interruption there. <laughs> uh, we were talking about Saidi Sadar. So, yes, women are better with water and uh, stuff, men are better with fire and earth. Um, and um, yeah, and then I think she also talks, so she talks about the two sides, the two halves to the one power. Uh, she also talks about, you know, the fact that typical uh, fancy stuff, fire, water, earth, different types of way of weaving them, light and darkness, and all that sort of crap. <laughs> so we get all this deposition on the one power itself, and then Egwene lights the ball up slightly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then yes, and then we move on, and yeah, we, and we get the explanation of the jars. But we could talk about jars later on because I, I like my favorite jars, the jam jar. 
Jam jar. <laughs> <laughs> Got them on. <clears throat> um, yes. So, what's the next chapter? The next chapter, chapter 13, choices. Uh, I think my favorite choice is our new nicknames for land. We have Jamaican land. I think you've also called him Jay land. I think I called him Lanny from the border. So <laughs> I like I like Lanny from the border or uh, Jay. <laughs> was it uh, Jay land man drag? <laughs> man drag. <laughs> so, well, you listeners, you can tell us your favorite nickname for land too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> tweet, tweet us at Tarvary and Pod your favorite Jay lands. <laughs> your favorite overall land uh, nickname, be it from us or be it from anywhere else. <laughs> so, my first comment for this chapter says: Parent comments that they will be home in a couple months. Um, yes, this is really, choices, isn't it? Chapter. Yes, chapter yes. thirteen choices. Sorry. <laughs> Aaron says we'll be home in a couple months. He really is a country bumpkin. Edwin <laughs> shines the boys for their for their acting homesick. <laughs> yeah, they've become, they've they've talking they've always talking about leaving the two rivers and having adventures. And yep. now that they've finally got outside of the two rivers and can't see the two rivers, uh, <laughs> they're like, oh, which will be home. <laughs> Can't wait till we come home, Ryan. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Douchebags, come on. Uh, <laughs> and it's funny because when they then they, as they're going down after as they're going down the road they, they'll see other farms outside of the two rivers and they're actually surprised that it looks just like any other farm as if it was from the two rivers <laughs> the farms really and farms secluded. boys <laughs> it tells you how secluded these boys really were and how backwater two rivers was when they were surprised to see well it just looks like any other farm <laughs> it's just like my dad's farm <laughs> yep 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 um matt is caught uh, fantasizing about uh, tra- uh, going off to far off lands away from the eyes to die. Maureen catches him and she is none too thrilled at his, his ponderings of running away. And I think we get, this is where we get one of my favorite Maureen lines is where she'll, she'll tell them, you know, I'll do anything it takes, anything before the dark one gets you. I will kill you myself before letting the dark one have you. Have you. Yeah, but she says it like she's bloody Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she like leers over him. I just like, I believe her. I Maybe. will. <laughs> I will fucking kill you before I let the fucking dark one have his hands on you. <laughs> so sort your fucking shit out, Matt. <laughs> uh, Rand also continues spying on the eyes to die training. And this is the second second chapter in a row where he's spying on, on women. Uh, yeah, Rand, Rand likes spying on women. <laughs> yes, I mean, because oh, well, every chapter is in Rand's perspective. So we have to. You know, <laughs> As it introduced shifting perspectives, <laughs> Rand's kind of obligated to have to spy on the women. <laughs> yes, that's that's how they put it. He's obligated to spy on the women. Yes, he, he doesn't he doesn't mention the fact you know that they're getting changed and getting <laughs> going into the water. Oh no no no! <laughs> I was merely looking going into the water, and they were talking about Ace of Dice stuff. <laughs> so here's some here's some deposition. <laughs> this actually this is the chapter where they talk about Ben are stronger in other. Ah media. okay. Versus women. I have my notes here. Um, and also, Maureen mentions another Emmons fielder with the gift. Who, ooh, who could that be? Although, you know, odds dun, are. Dun, dun. I know who it is by now, but. Um, we'll find, we'll find out very soon. Very soon. Uh, my D&D reference for the day, Land helps the boys with their strength and weapon proficiency. <laughs> yes. Again, it's like I said back in the... Um... Uh, the leave taking chapter where he's <clears throat> he's given Perrin instructions on how to like scout out a room and although mm-hmm. Perrin does a very bad job which uh yep you're supposed to note that down on a Perrin does something stupid I did that I did it didn't sweep the barn <laughs> excellent he didn't sweep the barn properly he didn't look in the hayloft <laughs> 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 yes so Lan Lan's teaching the boys how to use their weapons and how to actually be um badasses and Tom is helping them with the dexterity too mm-hmm. yeah he's teaching them how to juggle Yep, that'll come in <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so the party arrives at Berlon, their first big city. Berlon, uh, <laughs> big the city made out of wood. The size of the city, and I love it because as soon as they go, wow, look at the size of the city. Tom's like, city. <laughs> <laughs> you call this a fucking city? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show I, you. I've had bigger. I've had bigger sessions on the toilet than that. Anyway. <laughs> I uh, love a bit of toilet humor. Anyway. I sense another one star anonymous review coming down. <laughs> yes. I like the show, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are they going? What's that bloke talking about? Oh uh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, Be- Berlon is a big city made out of wood. It's got a huge wooden surrounded like, by a big wall. 
yeah, it's got a wall. You got to, you know, that's something that's totally foreign to the boys. Is why do you need a wall? Why is there a gate? You, you can't wander in on your own. I mean, why, why is that? Why, why, why? No. <laughs> um, Maureen lets the party know that I said die are frowned upon in Barillon. And please introduce yourselves to Mistress Alice and Master Ander. <clears throat> I think basically that's just a fairly common thing, apart from in the huge cities, that every town seems to hate Aes Sedai. Yes. <laughs> but she has to... She has may to, not be the truth you think. You know, she, got, she basically got chased out of uh, Emmons Field by people with pitchforks. <laughs> yes. It's like, yeah, guys, guess what? Towns don't like Aes Sedai. So. <laughs> so you know how I pretended to be a, a noble woman when I got to your town? Well, let's Call do that again. <laughs> uh, so, so you say yeah. Elite for Alice, because I know it's this... It, it makes me think of another, you know, geek out uh, video game, but it makes me think uh, of fantasy. Stars. No, it's uh, a lady. Yeah, Elise. It's Lady Elise. Elise, good. That's, good. that's uh, how they were pronouncing it on uh, Audible. Uh, but yeah, I know what you mean. It's fa- good old fantasy star. <laughs> yes. Bring back, bring back check fantasy out, star. Check out the fantasy star one review on RPG: The Golden Years. Yes, and check out the fantasy star two review uh, featuring Rob. <laughs> RPG: The Golden Years. Hello. 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 I'm here. <laughs> So we meet Master Art oh, Anvin. Uh, Art, oh my God, my writing. Is this is this the gatekeeper? Yeah? Yes. Yes. This yes. is Shigoni Weaver. Watch guard. We learn <laughs> we learn about Children of the Light. We hear that they're in Barillon. Uh Although although the why they're here and their action and their and whoops, although why and uh, for what reasons are still unknown as we kind of find out the children of light will just kind of randomly pop up in cities to spread the good word. <sighs> yes. Spread something. Yeah, spread something. That's, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> chlamydia. They, they um, <laughs> no, chlamydia is not walking in the light, but um, they have oh, their, I I which city they're, they're centrally located in, but they will spread their, spread their wings and pop up to either question the folk or, or wonder why they're not walking in the light. Which by walking in light means accept them 100% totally. <laughs> yeah. So for a bit of um, background on the Children of Light, Children of Light are a military organ, a military slash religious organization. So this is like the Vatican, right? So imagine the Vatican uh, yes. have their own military, which they don't. <laughs> so, but if the Vatican had a military that then basically went round and said, "Hey, are you a good?" are you a good person? Do you believe in God? <laughs> and you were like, yes. And they went, no, you don't. And you're like, no, I do. They'd be like, no, you don't. I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> um, yeah, they just... Very, extreme, very, very yes. extremist in that way. Very, very extremist. And it's basically their word against yours and their word is always right because they are the children of light. Hey, they're right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so children of light, huge bunch of dicks. Don't, don't make them angry. Just don't, don't single yourself out to them. Indeed. That way. Indeed. Uh, yeah, they're just a bunch of uh, born holes. That's what they are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're so. such a bunch of Draco Malfoys. Um, anyway. Uh, the next note here is Tom provides us a little more backstory and lore for the boys. Uh, stuff like the Stone of Tear, mm-hmm. uh, the sword that cannot be cannot be uh, touched, and Dragon Prophecy is kind of, kind of a foreshadowing of, of major, major events and places. <laughs> Some things that don't happen for five or six books. <laughs> <laughs> first, first mention here. Does he mention the horn as well? I don't know if he mentions it here, but I know that that probably comes up. I, a, mem- I remember being a very early, very, very early one. Yeah, sorry guys, I, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to this bit as I was walking to work, but there's so many I mean, people on bicycles and I'm trying to run you over all the time because they're dicks. <laughs> uh, I'm going to edit that bit out. <laughs> there's so there's so many people in there's so, uh, the, the roads in London are so busy that I'm trying to make sure I don't get run over. There you go. That there sounds go. much better. Yeah, no, no one's going to know what I actually said, but I'm going to leave this bit. In. <laughs> my anyway, final note, my final note the chapter is we meet Master Fitch yeah. and we are introduced to the stag and lion Ooh. twice as big as the wine spring yes huge building compared to the wine spring <laughs> uh, and Master Fitch I love Master Fitch two wine springs <laughs> two wine springs uh, so and that brings a close to choices what was the choices the choice was to was for Matt was to <laughs> Stay or run off to. I think he said he wanted to run off to Ilian. Yes. Place, place where there's no ice that I ran. 
Yes, because uh, Ilion really hate Isodyne. Ilion's yes. right on the south coast. <laughs> so the further north you go, the more accepted Isodyne are, and the further south you go, the, le- the more they're hated. And Tarvalon, Tarvalon the Isodyne city, is fairly northern. And uh, even more north than that is uh, Jayland from the border. Jay Jay from the border. From the border. Uh, <laughs> Lanny from the border. We can't stop. <laughs> That train also wasn't ending anytime soon. <laughs> oh my god! I'm trying. I'm trying to remember how the song um, <laughs> "Jenny from the Block" know. goes. I, so. I think Gmo or was it Gmo or was it Megan? Someone threw a couple uh, lines out there. <laughs> Jenny from the Block. Yeah. <clears throat> Lanny from the border, man. I'm Lanny from the border. My name's Lanny Mandrag. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yes. On the Tom Grimm podcast, do not condone any drug taking of any form. Unless you're from the Borderlands. Unless you were Malkyrian King. Oops, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that out. Uh, Prince. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, those were chapters. Uh, what, what chapters we are, are we? We are for reals yet? Where are we? Uh, 12 and 13, isn't it? Yes, chapters 12 and 13. So, chapter they, they crossed the ferry and the gang have made their way to Berlin. And I believe next chapter we're going to get some more fun and games with the Children of Light, and we're going to meet a very important lady. Well, yes. Uh, well, I know that chap- chapter fifteen has a lot of beefy parts to it, and I think <laughs> I think that might be the chapter you're thinking of. I think <clears throat> oh, next yes. chapter might be. Oh, next chapter is Stag and Lion. Uh, or they like to call quite- it. As I like to call it, the 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 Baratheons and the Lannisters. That's Game of Thrones reference. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Like I <laughs> the said, Baratheon is a stag as their as their uh, crest, and the Lannisters have a lion as their crest. So, um, <laughs> Game of Thrones spoilers. Like I, I think I've said this before. I watched season one when Sean Bean died. I was out. <laughs> like, no, fuck this. <laughs> the show's gone downhill. <laughs> uh, no, you gotta you go at least four, maybe five seasons before it goes downhill. No, 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 that's it. Moment he, moment <laughs> Bean dies, everything's you know. There's just no point. He, he doesn't. He does. In spoilers, he he doesn't come back in any flashbacks here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, uh, I mean he had a very short. He had a very like ten ten episode contract. <laughs> so Final Fantasy fifteen spoilers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he died. He dies in the movie Kingsglaive, which is set before Final Fantasy fifteen, and the whole. King- the whole the whole genre goes downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> the whole universe, sorry, goes downhill from there. Because the anime Brotherhood was good. Technically, he was still alive in that. <laughs> you know, I still haven't beaten fifteen yet. <laughs> you should. I know I should. I the last, myself. the last okay. from chapter thirteen to the end of that is great. Is it chapter thirteen? I can't remember. The bit where it goes on rails all of a sudden is brilliant. You mm-hmm. go to Listalem. <laughs> you go to Listalem, uh, which is the city which is based on um, Venice. Which is really good, and then from that moment onwards, it's a brilliant, brilliant game. That all that stuff was really well thought through. <laughs> I do need to put time in. I, yeah, it's like I they had the end or, 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 or geeking out about podcasting. Yeah, it's like they had. Ah, oh, yeah. So it really frustrates me because it's like they had the ending, but like they really worked that bit out, and they would worked out how to get to the ending, but they just hadn't worked out the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and so they just went, eh, "Let's do fetch quest." <laughs> All right, we can cut this part out and we can tag it on to one of the ends of the RPG. <laughs> no, no, this one's that. This bit's I think we just lost. I think we just lost half our listeners. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we just gained some for our picky. <laughs> okay. No, I don't. So, <laughs> um, yes. So. Readings, with, readings with Rob. Yes. So from chapter 12, I, I pulled the uh, section with Egwin, uh, tapping her into the One Power for the first time. And for 13, I took uh, the boys' reaction at seeing the big city <laughs> quote unquote, for the first time. Big city. <laughs> so here we are with readings with Rob. And now, the Taveren present to you readings with Rob. The old blood is strong in Evans Field, and the old blood sings. I knew you for what you were the moment I saw you. No eyes said I can stand in the presence of a woman who can channel or is close to her change and not feel it. She rummaged in the pouch at her belt and produced a small blue gem on a gold chain that she had earlier worn in her hair. You are very close to your change. Your first touching. It would be better if I guide you through it. That way you would avoid the... 
unpleasant effects that come to those who must find their own way. Egwene's eyes widened as she looked at the stone, and she wet her lips repeatedly. Is, does that have the power? Of course not, Ma Rain snapped. Things do not have the power, child. Even an angry owl is only a tool. This is just a pretty blue stone, but it can give off light. Here. Egwene's hands trembled as Ma Rain laid the stone on her fingertips. She started to pull back, but the Aes Sedai held both her hands in one of hers and gently touched the other side of Egwene's head. Look at the stone, the Aes Sedai said softly. It is better this way than fumbling alone. Clear your mind of everything but the stone. Clear your mind and let yourself drift. There is only the stone and emptiness. I will begin it. Drift and let me guide you. No thoughts. Drift. Rand's fingers dug into his knees. His jaws clenched until they hurt. She has to fail. She has to. Light bloomed in the stone. Just one flash of blue and then gone. No brighter than a firefly, but he flinched as if it had been blinding. Egwene and Moiraine stared into the stone, faces empty. Another flash came, and another, until the azure light pulsed like the beating of a heart. It's the eyes to die, he thought desperately. Moiraine's doing it, not Egwene. One last feeble flicker, and the stone was merely a bauble again. Rand held his breath. For a moment, Egwene continued to stare at the small stone. Then she looked up at Ma Rain. I, I thought I felt something, but, but perhaps you are mistaken about me. I am sorry I wasted your time. I have wasted nothing, child. A small smile of satisfaction flitted across Ma Rain's lips. That last light was yours alone. It was... Egwene exclaimed, then slid immediately back into glumness. But it was barely there at all. Now you are behaving like a foolish village girl. Most who come to Tarvalon must study for many months before they can do what you just did. You may go far, perhaps even the Amaryllin seat one day, if you study hard and work hard. You may... With a cry of delight, Edwin threw her arms around the eyes to die. Oh, thank you! Rand, did you hear? I'm going to be an eyes to die! Hey, Rand, Matt called. I can juggle four. Rand waved in reply without looking around. I told you I'd get to four before you. I. Look! They had topped a low hill, and below them, a scant mile away through the stark trees and the stretching shadows of evening, lay Berlon. Rand gasped, trying to smile and gape at the same time. A log wall nearly twenty feet tall surrounded the town, with wooden watchtowers scattered along its length. Within, rooftops of slate and tile glinted with the sinking sun, and feathers of smoke drifted upward from chimneys. Hundreds of chimneys. There was not a thatched roof to be seen. A broad road ran east from the town, and another west, each with at least a dozen wagons and twice as many ox carts trudging towards the palisade. Farms lay scattered about the town, thickest to the north, while only a few broke the forest to the south. But they might as well not existed so far as Rand was concerned. It's bigger than Emmons Field and Watch Hill and Devon Ride all put together. And maybe Terran Ferry, too. So that's a city? Matt breathed, leaning forward across his horse's neck to stare. Perrin could only shake his head. How can so many people live in one place? Egwene simply stared. Tom Marilyn glanced at Matt, then rolled his eyes and blew out his mustaches. <laughs> city? He snorted. And you, Rand? Marain said. What do you think of your first sight of Berlon? I think it's a long way from home, he said slowly, bringing a sharp laugh from Matt. You have further to go yet, Ma Rain said. Much further, 
but there is no other choice except to run and hide and run again for the rest of your lives. And short lives they would be. You must remember that when the journey becomes hard, you have no choice. Rand exchanged glances with Matt and Perrin. By their faces, they were thinking the same thing as he was. How could she talk as if they had any choice after what she had said? The eyes to die made our choices. Ma Rain went on as if their thoughts were not played. The danger begins again here. Watch what you say within those walls. Above all, do not mention Trollocs or Halfmen or any such. You must not even think of the Dark One. Some in Berlon have even less love for Aes Sedai than do the people of Emmons Field, and there may even be Dark Friends. Egwin gasped, and Perrin muttered under his breath. Matt's face paled, but Mulrain went on calmly. We must attract as little attention as possible. Lan was exchanging his cloak of shifting greys and greens for one of dark brown, more ordinary, though of fine cut and weave. His color-changing cloak made a large bulge in one of his saddlebags. We do not go by our own names here, Ma Rain continued. Here I am known as Elise and Lan as Andra. Remember that. Good? Let us be within the walls before night catches on. The gates of Berlan are closed from sundown to sunrise. That was Readings with Rob. If there's a passage in an upcoming chapter you wish to have read on the podcast, simply tweet us at Pod with your request. And that, dear friends, was Readings with Robert. <laughs> Robert, not Jordan. That, that, Re- hey, readings you know, with Robert, name. Jordan. Robert, not Jordan. <laughs> now, hopefully... <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I've I've got all the bits together now. I just need to edit it down, but I should have my first tellings of the wheel. Tellings of the wheel. I'm brought hoping... to you by Bill. Indeed, I'm hoping it should come awesome. out before this episode. <laughs> okay. So if if that is the case, and you have heard tellings of the wheel, uh, let me know what you think of it. <laughs> I'd love I'd love to awesome. know. Cause... We might need a Discord uh, section for for tellings. Yes. Uh, well, it's 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 basically when you get a huge. Uh, for my, well, my idea of tellings for the wheel is that every time there's a huge deposition from one of the characters on backstory and lore. Well, yeah, I just came across one. Uh, I believe uh, Shadar Logoth is yes. a tellings. Worthy. Yes, I've got that. Awesome. <laughs> that's why that's that's my next tellings of the wheel. But the first one's going to be the story of Mount Ephraim. Um so I've it's the same. It's basically as read in the book. Oh, Manathren. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good old man. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's basically it's almost as if it was from the reading of the book. I have just taken a few bits out so it flows better as a story. Gotcha. Because uh, it's just like, and then Moraine said, "I'm just taking like those certain sections out." <laughs> so it's not as it's not completely as is, but it's me telling the story of Mount Ephraim. Um, so yeah let me know what you guys think of that I'll be very interested because uh, if you hate it I'll stop doing it because <laughs> it takes a lot of time <laughs> if you hate it we would never tell you so just keep doing it no no no, no. don't do that and no, blame no. Rich yeah blame Rich it's definitely Rich's fault um, so have we got anything else I mean uh, we've got a YouTube channel now that was a kind of pleasant surprise when when uh, Tyler <laughs> at the network told us that I thought that was awesome sorry I completely, I completely forgot to mention that to you Rich <laughs> me, and Tyler, me and Tyler had been planning it for a couple of weeks. We had spoken okay. about because um, Tyler had kind of dabbled with um, putting a few of the network stuff onto YouTube. So there is uh-huh. a uh, so probably work has its own YouTube channel, and there's uh-huh. a few of our like month day year reviews on there as well, uh, okay. which he had done. And then he was just like he said to me like, "Well, you're only like eight episodes in. I could probably bash those out in two weeks." I was like, "Well, yeah, okay. Let's do the let's do the pilot. See what it's like." <laughs> And then I liked it. I said, "Yeah, okay." And then he put the first three up, and then I, and then I thought, "Oh, I should probably tell Rich and uh, Rob." <laughs> I think I found it just randomly. You guys talking on Discord. I was like, 
oh, what the, f- what the hell are these guys talking about? Hey. <laughs> YouTube? <laughs> I, like, I like the one with Rich as well, because I had, like, I know Rich doesn't check Discord that often. <laughs> he'll pop in and say, how's everyone doing? And then he'll leave. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and so, like, I know he'd been tagged in a lot of the conversations of the YouTube channel after we had sort of mentioned, like, you know, oh, yeah, the first three episodes are up, you know, guys, take a look, let us know what you think. <laughs> and then a week later, or, like, live on, <laughs> live as we was recording the episode, I went, oh, and we've got the new YouTube channel. And he's like, what? <laughs> so a complete surprise to me. So I well, as, really of, as of us recording now, I think he's got the first eight, seven or eight out there now. So he's he's pumping them out there. Yes. So we we'll get to a point where they can they can come out as as well. So you know, if you know anybody out there who likes the wheel of time, there's no excuse now. I mean, between yeah, between podcasts, everywhere, Twitter, YouTube, uh, I think Spotify, Tyler, Overcast, uh, TuneIn Radio, <laughs> everything. <laughs> We are everywhere. You can We are us. everywhere. <laughs> we have been waiting for you. <laughs> Brand. <laughs> Madrid. Uh. <laughs> anyway. You are the one, boy. <laughs> By the I'm way, I, 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 I've gone ahead and did a thing. I, I've nicknamed the Merge All Kevin. So whenever there's a Merge All <laughs> speaking, Kevin the Merge All. Kevin the Merge All. I just, I just, I just I don't know why. But it's Kevin the Murdoch. So all Murdoch <laughs> in the series are now known as Kevin. Kevin. Okay. Yes. And all Drakkar are called Dave. Drakkar Noirs. Yes. <laughs> Drakkar Noir. You <laughs> sent brought to you by the Dark One. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsored by Beelzebub. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this message is approved all by right. Beelzebub. <laughs> the father of lies. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> look forward to chapter 14 next week. Uh, the Stag and your- yeah, the stagging line. Have you, have you posted the Bill Lizamon uh, picture on Discord yet? Because I've seen that back and forth on R. Peggy. The, the what? You oh, with the eyes and the flames and the. Oh, that's uh, that's my that's my hog consumption. That's me being consumed yeah, by the hog. I, well, I think my eyes that, my eyes are pigs. That's Bill Alzam. Well, <laughs> fire in the background looked like you, I thought it was you trying to be Alzamon, so I called him Bill Alzamon. <laughs> no, no, no. That's my uh, uh, so. Oh, right, there's another podcast out there. <laughs> oh, I still think you should post it to I'm our not, Discord. I'm not, I'm not, sure not like on. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to fully plug their podcast because I think they oh. plan to do a Wheel of Time podcast at some point. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> but uh, there is another podcast that I um, I'm not a part of, but I help occasionally with a few little bits here and there, and they do a media consumption competition. And my team's into the final four. So at the moment, You're I'm undefeated. Like, I'm undefeated. Yeah, my Metallica's heroes are undefeated. And we are currently, um, uh, hopefully, <clears throat> going to get into the final next week. And yeah, Actually, so I'm just consuming. Just in the first round. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so I'm just consuming media. Just like, no, like, there's no tomorrow at the moment. And so, it's yeah, really I, I posted a nice picture. Consume anything. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but podcasts don't count. <laughs> and neither does creating your own media you can't hog stuff I was in a team creating. with Dista I thought, I thought we were set <laughs> no unfortunately because that was the team with Schweiss anyway uh, yeah anyway, right. anyway 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 I've got um, I've got to run dude <laughs> alright <laughs> it's uh, love the it's, show please rate review give us love we, we, we love to have any criticism good or bad neutral <clears throat> as always yes uh, give us a one star if we deserve it but let us know why and how we can improve positive yeah positivity and, uh, guys yeah, positivity positive so, Rob, uh, you know, I'm sorry about the bill on your credit card last week. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I, I got a call from from uh, a place. They, they had some very expensive gin. <laughs> they said, they said, where the hell is Two Rivers, <laughs> and why are there being charges there? <laughs> well, they had some very nice um, cool frame gin, which was delicious. Um, yeah, and, and then and then Rich got on the rum, <laughs> the Ibarra oh, rum. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Right. Loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Take care. We Bye. will talk to you next time. Good news. I've got Rich's credit card this time. Is it good? Will it work? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> His check bounced last week. Uh, <laughs> love you, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing the two rivers because <laughs> it's that backwards. <laughs> Bye. Barrelon? Where the hell's Barrelon? Thank you for listening. If you want to continue the conversation, tap into the one power and contact us on Twitter at TavirenPod. You can also contact Bill at Metunica and Rich at HailBlue1569. 
You can also reach Rob at his website, digging, D-I-G-G-I-N, diggingdeepsports.com. And as always, we will see you at the Wine Spring Inn. Here's to another great podcast, gentlemen. Cheers! Ah, damn it, Bill! Not again! Brad, can you get another round of pints for me and the boys? Yes, yes, again. No, Bill, this time. Thank you, Brad. Much, much appreciated. Now, where were we, men? Actually, I believe it's Rich's turn at the Stones table. Hmm? What's that you say? No, no, I don't think old Seth will have that. I'm ready to trim my fingernails with my knife. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, so I may not be able to read my own handwriting. <laughs> and I've got no, and I've got no notes. <laughs> Let's do and this. Will, and you will hear this. That's my notebook. So that's right. That's that's authentic noise. That is. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Tyler, and I host the podcast Too Young for This Hit where I watch movies I've never seen before with guests who love them. So what kind of movies do we watch? We watch mostly like classics movies, you know, like... Escape from New York. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Alien. Wayne's World, Wayne's World, party time, excellent! Aliens. Smokey and the Bandits. Rocky Horror Picture Show. In addition to talking about movies, we also talk about cats. A lot. For pretty much no reason. You can find Too Young for This Hit and tons of other great podcasts at probablywork.com. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at probablywork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called probablywork.com.